technology welcomes you to the fun and exciting world of sewing. With your new brother, LS1217, you'll enjoy making fashion clothing, crafting gift items, placemats, curtains, pillows, and other decorative touches for your home. Hi, I'm June Mellinger, and I'd like to show you how easy it is to set up your machine and use it for a variety of sewing functions. So let's get started. Your brother's sewing machine comes with a number of parts and accessories, including a regular sewing foot and a zipper foot, bobbins and needles, a vertical spool pin, a darning plate, instruction manual, and a combination foot controller and power supply unit. Plug the power supply into your machine here and plug the other end into a wall socket. Turn on the machine here. Let's look at the front of the machine. Your machine needle has three sewing positions that are controlled with this lever, left, middle, and right. You'll move the needle position for different sewing applications. This knob controls the stitch width. Adjust the stitch width when you want to sew a zigzag or other decorative stitch. For a straight stitch, the stitch width should be zero. Use this knob when you want to change the stitch length for basting or sewing different weights of fabric, or when you want to sew different types of zigzag stitches. Press the reverse stitching lever when you want to sew backward, for example when you want to lock your stitches. The balance wheel is here on the side of the machine. Turn it toward you to move the needle up and down. This is the tension control dial. Your tension should be set in this range for most normal sewing. Turn the dial to a lower number to loosen the upper thread tension and to a higher number to tighten the upper thread tension. Refer to pages 21 and 22 of your instruction manual for information on how to correct poor thread balance. Before using your LS1217 for the first time, if you haven't used it in a while, and from time to time when you're sewing regularly, you must oil your machine. Page 54 of your manual will show you where to oil your machine and how often it should be oiled. Sewing machine oil is available from your retailer. Let's set up the machine for sewing. First, we'll wind a bobbin. Pull up the spool pin and put the spool on it. Wind the thread end around the bobbin winding tension disc. The diagram with the dashed lines on the top of the machine will show you the proper direction. Pass the thread through the hole in the bobbin from the inside. Align the groove on the inside of the bobbin with the spring on the bobbin winding shaft and slide the bobbin on, locking it in place. Move the shaft to the right. Hold the thread while gently pressing the foot controller. Wind the thread a few times, then stop the machine and cut the thread end. Press the foot controller to finish winding the bobbin. The machine will stop when the bobbin is full. Clip the thread and slide the bobbin winding shaft back to the left. To set the bobbin, first turn off your machine. Turn the balance wheel toward you 
to raise the needle to its highest position and raise the presser foot lever. Remove the extension table by gently pulling up on the front here. Open the shuttle cover and remove the bobbin cover by pulling the latch toward you and pulling the bobbin cover out of the shuttle race. Insert the bobbin with the thread running clockwise. Pull the thread down into the slot, then under the tension spring and into the delivery eye. Hold the bobbin case by the latch and place it back into the shuttle race. Be sure that the case is locked in place or it will fall out as soon as you start sewing. You will also notice that with the extension table removed, your machine is ready for free arm sewing. This is particularly helpful when sewing sleeves, pant legs, pouches, and other tubular items. The Brother LS1217 uses standard household sewing machine needles. Your machine comes with a needle already inserted. You should change your needles regularly. A dull needle can cause broken thread and skip stitches. There are also different sizes and types of needles for different weights and types of fabric. The chart on page 23 of your manual will help you decide the right needle and thread to use for your sewing projects. With the power still off and the needle bar still at its highest position, lower the presser foot. Loosen the needle clamp with a coin and pull the needle down to remove it. With the flat side toward the back, insert the new needle as far as it will go. Tighten the needle clamp. Be careful not to over tighten it. Let's turn the machine back on to complete the upper threading. Raise the presser foot lever. Turn the balance wheel toward you to bring the take up lever to its highest position. Place your thread on the spool pin with the thread unwinding from the front. Pass the thread through the first guide as indicated by the diagram with the solid line. Bring the thread down the right slot under the tension dial and up the left slot, making sure the thread catches in the check spring behind the dial. Guide the thread around the take-up lever and back down the left slot. Hook the thread through the thread guide just above the needle. Lower the presser foot and thread the needle from front to back. To pull up the bobbin thread, raise the presser foot and the needle bar to their highest positions. Hold the upper thread end in your left hand while turning the balance wheel toward you with your right hand. Move the needle down, then all the way back to its highest position. Pull the thread to bring up the looped bobbin thread. Pull out the bobbin thread and pass both under the presser foot and to the back of the machine, passing the upper thread through the toes of the presser foot. You'll notice that there are markings on the needle plate. Use these or the side of your presser foot to align your fabric. When you have finished sewing a seam, you can cut your thread with the thread cutter located on the back of the needle bar. The straight stitch is the most versatile sewing stitch on any sewing machine. As we saw earlier, the Brother LS1217 has three needle positions, left, middle, and right. The middle needle position is best for most sewing applications, and especially when using a twin needle. Use your middle straight stitch when sewing seams in clothing, quilts, and craft and home decor projects. The middle straight stitch is used for sewing a top stitched hem in clothing and craft or home decor items like napkins. 
For channel or crosshatch quilting, mark evenly spaced lines on your fabric. Base together your top fabric, batting, and backing fabric. Align the center of the presser foot with the lines on the fabric and stitch. You can also use the middle straight stitch to add binding to your project. In no time at all, you can create a great new look to freshen up a room or a gift for someone special. Ruffles add a lovely finish to lots of different projects and your LS1217 can create the gathers with ease. Mark a gathering line just inside your seam line, then another an eighth to a quarter inch away. Turn your upper thread tension down to two and your stitch length up to four. Choose the middle straight stitch and align the center of the foot with the line that you drew. Stitch the two rows. Pull up the lower thread to gather the fabric, adjusting the gathers so that they are evenly distributed. Follow your pattern to complete the project. You can add a more tailored decorative detail to your sewing projects by making tucks. Again, all you need is a straight stitch. Decide what width you want your tucks and how far apart they'll be. You can make tucks that are side by side, overlapping, or that have a space between them. For tucks that are 3 eighths of an inch wide with no space between them, mark lines 3 eighths of an inch apart. Fold the fabric on the second marked line, aligning the first and third lines. Stitch on the first line. Fold the next tuck and stitch. If you want tucks that go in both directions, start in the center and make the tucks to one side. Then, Go back to the center and tuck the fabric in the other direction. When you finish tucking the fabric, lay your pattern piece over the fabric and cut out and finish your item as you normally would. You can do both darning and free motion quilting with the middle straight stitch on your brother LS1217. For either function, Remove the presser foot and cover the feed dogs with the darning plate. Free motion functions can be executed with no foot, but you can also attach the optional clear quilting foot for a little bit more stability. To repair a tear or hole in fabric, first place the damaged item in a small embroidery hoop. Attach a purchase patch or a piece of fabric similar to the damaged item to the back. A fabric glue stick works well for this. Raise the presser foot lever to its highest position and slide the embroidery hoop under the needle or quilting foot and lower the presser foot. Hold the upper thread in your left hand and turn the balance wheel toward you to bring up the lower thread. Stitch in place a few times to lock the thread. Start stitching in a straight line coming toward you. Then, stitch back in the opposite direction. Keep stitching closely spaced parallel lines until the entire area is covered. For heavier fabric, sew a series of lines perpendicular to the original lines. Free motion stitching adds a really personal touch to your quilted projects. Using different types of threads for your free motion quilting will yield a variety of exciting effects. You should experiment with different types of decorative threads when embellishing your sewing projects. Be sure to use the right type of needle when sewing with specialty threads. 
Set up your machine as you did for darning. Layer and baste your fabric, batting, and backing and slide them under the needle or presser foot. Again, bring up your bobbin thread and stitch in place to lock. Place your hands on either side of the sewing bed and start to move the fabric in a smooth, even motion. Continue this motion until you have filled the area that you wanted to fill with stitching. Doesn't that look great? Change to the included adjustable zipper foot when you want to attach zippers, piping, and other bulky trims to your sewing projects. To change presser feet, first turn off your machine. Turn the balance wheel toward you to bring the needle to its highest position. Then raise the presser foot lever. Use a coin or screwdriver to loosen the screw and remove the foot. Attach the zipper foot and securely tighten the screw. You can use the middle straight stitch with the adjustable zipper foot, but often when stitching bulky piping and trims, it's better to use the left needle position. To adjust the position of the foot, Loosen the screw here on the back and slide the foot to position it so that the needle is not touching the foot. When you position the zipper foot to the left of the needle, use the middle or right needle position. Let's attach some piping. Pin the piping to the seam where you want to insert it. Turn your stitch length dial to four. Adjust the zipper foot so that it both holds the fabric securely and will stitch close to or on the existing stitching lines of the piping. Base the piping to the fabric. When you're ready to stitch the pipe seam, pin the other piece of the fabric to the piece with the piping. Adjust your foot or your needle position so that you sew even closer to the piping. When you're finished, you'll have perfectly inserted piping. Use the right straight stitch for edge stitching and top stitching. Attach the zigzag foot. Select the right straight stitch and align your fabric with the side of the foot or one of the markings on the needle plate. Add edge stitching and top stitching to clothing, placemats, baby items, anything that needs just a little something to add a finishing touch. You can use a twin needle with your LS1217 for a number of sewing applications. A twin needle is included with your machine. You should always be sure that the needle position is set to middle when sewing with a twin needle. With a twin needle, you'll use two spools of thread. The threads can be the same color or different colors, but should be the same weight. Insert the twin needle the same way you would insert a regular needle. Thread the machine with the first spool of thread as you would normally. After you pass the thread through the thread guide, thread the right needle. Next, insert the extra spool pin in this hole on the top of your machine. Place the thread on the spool pin and thread the machine. Don't pass the second thread through the thread guide right above the needle. 
Thread the left needle with this thread. Pull both threads through the toes in the presser foot and to the back, and you're ready to go. A straight stitch with a twin needle is a good choice for sewing hems on knits and casual clothing. Having two top threads and one bobbin thread creates a stitch that has some give, so the thread is less likely to break when the fabric stretches during normal wear. Turn up your hem to the length you want and stitch. Trim close to the stitching line when you're finished. You can add beautiful design detail to many types of projects with pin tucks. Use a narrow twin needle like the one that came with your machine when making pin tucks on a light to medium weight fabric, like batiste or lightweight linen. Starch the fabric, then pull a thread or draw lines on the fabric where you want to stitch your pin tucks. Thread your machine with lightweight cotton or cotton-covered polyester thread. You may need to adjust your tension, so practice on a scrap of fabric first. When you're happy with your tension, stitch on the mark lines of your project. Then, cut out and finish your project. The zigzag stitch is as versatile as the straight stitch. Turn the stitch width dial on your Brother LS1217 to get the zigzag width that you want. You can sew zigzag stitches while the machine is in any of the three needle positions. Use the narrow zigzag stitch when sewing seams and knits. This stitch will provide some give allowing the seam to stretch when the fabric stretches. A zigzag stitch is a good choice when applying narrow elastic directly to fabric. Adjust your stitch width and length. Cut your elastic to the length indicated in your directions. Fold the fabric and the elastic into quarters and mark. Pin the elastic to the wrong side of the fabric, matching the marks. Leave about a half inch seam allowance at the ends. Stretch the elastic with one hand behind the presser foot and the other holding the pin. Stitch the elastic to the fabric. Stitch the next section the same way until you have stitched the entire length. Finish your project as directed. When sewing woven fabrics, especially those that fray easily, you may want to use the zigzag as an over edge stitch. Sewing an over edge stitch also gives your seams a more finished look. Place your fabric under the foot so that the left swing of the needle pierces the fabric and the right swing of the needle stitches just off the edge of the fabric. Adjust the stitch width and length according to the fabric weight, wider and longer for medium to heavyweight fabric and shorter and narrower for lighter weight fabric. With very lightweight fabric, you may want to stitch completely on the fabric, then trim the excess when you're through. A bar tack is used to securely fasten belt loops to slacks and for pockets on denim and western shirts. Adjust your stitch length to halfway between F and zero and your stitch width to between one and two, depending on your fabric weight. This zigzag stitch will hold your belt loops and pockets through years of wear. And why sew buttons on by hand? 
when you can do it quickly, easily, and securely with your brother's sewing machine. Set the stitch length to zero. Snap the darning plate in place over the feed dogs. Place your marked fabric over the plate and place the button between the fabric and the presser foot. A dab of glue will help hold the button in place. Turn the balance wheel and adjust the stitch width so that the needle falls into the holes of the button without touching the sides. Slowly, sew about 10 stitches. Remove the fabric from the machine and cut the threads, leaving tails at least four inches long. Pull the threads to the back of the fabric and tie them to secure the button. When you sew buttons on very heavy fabric, you often need to make a thread shank. Refer to page 40 in your instruction manual for directions on how to do this. Buttonholes are quick and easy with your LS1217. Mark your buttonhole position on your fabric. It's a good idea to make a test buttonhole on a scrap of your project fabric first. When sewing lightweight fabric, place a piece of stabilizer under the fabric before stitching. Choose the right needle position and set the stitch width and length to zero. Align your presser foot with the marked line and sew a few locking stitches. Set the stitch width to five and length to between zero and F and sew three or four stitches, stopping the machine with the needle on the right side. Change your stitch width to just under two and stitch down the right side the length of your mark. Stop with the needle at the right side. Change your stitch width back to five and stitch the bottom bar tack, stopping the needle in the left side. Raise your presser foot, turn your fabric 180 degrees, set your stitch width to zero to shift the fabric slightly. Lower the presser foot. Turn the balance wheel to sew one stitch in place. Then, set the stitch width back to just under two and sew the other side of the buttonhole. When you reach the first bar tack, set the width and length back to zero and sew a few locking stitches. Now, wasn't that easy? You can experiment with different stitch widths and lengths for different size buttonholes and different weights of fabric. Generally, you should use more open zigzag stitches for heavier and loosely woven fabrics and close zigzag stitches for lighter weight fabric. You can stitch a blind hem with your brother's sewing machine by combining the straight stitch with the zigzag stitch. Select the right needle position. Choose a stitch length between two and three and a stitch width of zero. Turn up your hem and press. Then turn under three eighths of an inch at the raw edge and press. Fold back the edge of the fabric, leaving about one quarter of an inch of the hem area exposed. Position your presser foot so that the inside of the right toe butts up against the fold. Stitch about five stitches and stop. Change the stitch width dial to halfway between two and three and stitch one zigzag stitch. Turn the stitch width dial back to zero and stitch five more straight stitches. Then stitch one zigzag stitch again. Continue this way until the entire project is hemmed.
One of the wonderful things about sewing is that you can add your own personal touch to things that you make for yourself or give to others. With your LS1217 from Brother, there are a number of decorative details that you can use to express your creativity. Appliques are a great way to add embellishment to your sewing projects or ready-made items that may need a little pizzazz. Your appliques can have a casual feel or a more elegant look depending on your choice of applique fabrics, threads, and stitch length. For a casual look, choose an open zigzag stitch for your appliques. Stitch length should be between one and two and the stitch width depends on the size of your applique fabric piece. We suggest that with an open zigzag stitch, you either turn under the edges of your applique or use one of the many available fusible webs to seal the edges of the fabric. Baste, glue, or fuse your applique pieces to the base fabric. Stitch in place a few times to lock your stitches. Then, start to stitch with the outside swing of the needle dropping right on the edge of the fabric. Pivot your fabric at curves and corners. Lock your stitches when you've gone all the way around. A close zigzag, also called a satin stitch, can be used both for fun and casual or elegant appliques. It all depends on the design, the fabric, and the thread. When creating satin stitch applique, it isn't necessary to finish the edges of the applique pieces. Attach the applique fabric to the base fabric and set your stitch length between zero and F. As before, the stitch width depends on the size of the applique. You may need to loosen your tension slightly. Lock your stitches, then begin sewing. The outside swing of the needle should fall outside of the fabric, covering the edges. Pivot the fabric at curves and corners and lock your stitches when you reach the end. Satin stitch appliques look best when stitched with machine embroidery threads, available in polyester, rayon, cotton, and metallic. When using these threads, remember to use embroidery or metallic sewing needles, which are made especially for these types of threads. A satin stitch also works well alone as a decorative detail. Again, use decorative machine embroidery threads and needles designed for them. Insert a twin needle for even more possibilities when making decorative zigzag stitches. Remember to select the middle needle position when using a twin needle. Combine two different colors of polyester or rayon machine embroidery thread or pair one of these with a metallic thread. Your retailer has twin needles designed for use with decorative threads. To add even more texture to your sewing projects, attach decorative cords and braids. Use monofilament thread or machine embroidery thread in a matching or contrasting color. We suggest that you use a needle manufactured for use with metallic thread when sewing with metallic or monofilament thread. Turn the stitch length to four and adjust your stitch width according to the width of the cord or braid you're attaching. Thread your machine. When using monofilament thread or metallic thread, lower the upper tension. If you want to make specific patterns, mark them on your fabric. If not, just start sewing and let your creativity take over. One of my favorite decorative techniques is free motion monogramming, and it can become one of your favorites too. Remove the zigzag foot and cover the feed dogs with the darning plate. You can stitch without a foot or attach the optional clear quilting foot for greater control. 
Draw a horizontal line on your fabric. Then, write the letter or name that you want to monogram on the line. Place a piece of tearaway stabilizer behind the fabric and place both in an embroidery hoop. Raise the presser foot and slide the hoop under the needle or quilting foot. Thread your machine with machine embroidery thread and wind the bobbin with lighter weight bobbin or lingerie thread. Turn the balance wheel to bring the bobbin thread up through the fabric. Adjust your stitch length and width to zero. Hold both threads and stitch in place a few times to secure them. Adjust your stitch width to a zigzag stitch. The width will depend on the size of the letters you're stitching. Smaller letters will require a narrow stitch width, while larger letters need a wider stitch width. Experiment until you get the look that you want. Start stitching. Stitch in the same direction you would if you were writing. Move the hoop quickly and smoothly, making sure that your drawn line is always horizontal. Your stitches should resemble a satin stitch. Isn't that a great technique? After a little practice, you'll be ready to put monograms on almost everything you make. Pages 33 and 34 in your instruction manual show you how to make a number of other decorative satin stitches on your brother LS1217. Before I go, I'd like to invite you to visit us online at brothersews.com. At the Brother website, you'll find great project ideas as well as tips and tricks to help you with your sewing. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for the Brother Club. Now that you've seen everything your new Brother sewing machine can do, I'm sure you can't wait to get started. Happy stitching!